My name is Jason. Um, I'm from Chuuk. I'm the principal of Chuuk High School. I've been in the principal seat, uh, principal position for three years. And I've been uh, at Chuuk High School as assistant principal for seven years. So I've been working with uh, Paul Etik. He was the one who trained me to become the next principal of Chuuk High School. Um, what are your goals for Chuuk High School? Okay. All right, so my goal goes for the school first, pass all the accreditation um, requirements uh, for the FSM Department of Education. That's one. I want you guys to uh, produce good students to become productive citizen of Chuuk State and also the FSM. With teachers, we we want our all of our teachers to get their bachelor degrees uh, and teach at the high school level. I think that's some of the goals that I have. Well, well, first of all, do you think that with all the goals that you've stated, do you think that you have the Department of Education support? Are they supporting you enough to for you to reach your goals for your students? I think with the Department of Education, they they do support it to some of the programs, but uh, according to my observation from the first year I started uh, in in the system, I think uh, we need more support from the Department of Education uh, from all of the divisions within the department. Yeah, I think we need more support from supports from the, the department in order for us to move forward with all the, the goals that we have for the students and the school. How many teachers do we have on staff right now? I think we have 53 teachers. And the 46 teachers includes all the, and um, if I include all the support staff, then I will have 56 employees in two high school. But yeah. 46 teachers. 46 what are support staff? Support staff uh, staff includes uh, security guards, now in the nest, bus teachers. What's the ratio for uh, per student to teacher in class? According to the policy uh, given by the department uh, on student teacher ratio, it was supposed to be 25 students per teacher. But then uh, at Chuuk High School, uh, since we receive a lot of students from all of the five regions, we cannot uh, follow the policy. We exceed, we, we increase by five students within each of the classrooms. So yeah. The, the, the number of students, the enrollment for this school year is, I think it's close to 900 students. Oh, wow. Easy. Yeah, you, so per teacher, it's about 30? Or it's more? about 30 or 30 some students, or at least 10, 30. Okay. So, the world teach in that, you know, helping out. You, there was no problem with the you following the student teacher ratio then, right? You had enough teachers to follow the. Yes, we, we have per... enough teachers, but the problem is we, we don't have enough space, classrooms for to accommodate um, all the accommodate all the students. So that's why we exceed the the twenty five. Um, speaking of teachers, you had um, different programs before. Um, is that program still ongoing or has it stopped? Which which program? The World Beach? Yeah, I think World Beach left 2014. 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think 2014 to 15. They moved out 2014 to 15 because the, the ones that they returned and uh, worked with us, they were on contract. Um, so they came and uh, 
I have a one year contract with you guys too. But uh, the new program that just came in and then they also left uh, the program from the LDS Church. They call it Forever Young Foundation. It's under the humanitarian support or under the LDS Church. Mm -hmm. What was the cause for the um, road teach to end the yeah. The reason they, they gave us is they, they see that uh, the department always late to make payment to students and they cannot be able to process stipends for their following years and also for their housing in Chuk. When so that's the department, the department of education. Department of education. So that's that's the the reason they gave us. What about for the um, Forever Young um, program? Forever Young program, they moved out because they 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 were really supportive to the elementary program that we just started it, and I received two of applicants. My resume is for two of applicants. They were interested to come down. And when they just started closing down of the elementary school, that's when they pulled out and decided not to come. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what was the reason for closing down the K five program? Yeah. So we we started at the elementary program because we see that most of our ninth grade students could not read. Uh, mm -hmm their level, high school level, so we decided to reach down to their level, uh, the, the elementary level, so that we can help the existing elementary schools improve learning. So that's why we decided to start that program. And the, the reason for the department to closing it down is they say that we did not follow the procedure of opening or operating a school in Chuk uh, by going through the court of visitation and also seek uh, approval from the people, the people. So we, we, we say that, okay, so that's our fault. We, we admitted that we, we were doing that. So can we correct the wrong and move forward? Uh, because we see that we receive more um, like positive feedbacks from the parents and communities. Even parents that they work at the Department of Education, they, they send their kids to that program because they, they want their kids to learn uh, with English with the teachers. So the, the Board of Education, they, they told me that I have to start pushing on that idea to, uh, and idea of uh, continuing the, the program. They, they told me that I need to just let the existing elementary schools do that part and I will focus on doing my part with the secondary, like the high school students. I understand that there were some programs to help the students who were not necessarily going to college, for, but there were programs to prep them for, you know, for the life outside, how to help them, for example, um, nursing, if they did internships there, business events. Are these programs still ongoing or did that stop as well? Yeah, we we're planning to continue these programs because we see that these are the kind of pro uh, programs that will help the, that group of students. So at two high school, we have two group of students, two groups of students, one in college prep and one is, uh, we, we just call them skills, but those are the students that they, they go to the, the, the post vocation programs. Yeah, vocation. So we're going to start those program on the 25th of this month. Mm -hmm. So we, we're, 
we're planning to reach out to businesses uh, and also the uh, departments to uh, work with, with them if they, if they can accept students from Chukai School to, to practical. Um, just to be clear so that we, um, the viewers will be able to understand a little more, uh, when you talk about the Forever program, um, that is the that includes the K five school, um, where it has the LDS church coming in, and then um, can you tell us a little bit about the vocational so that way we can understand what exactly it is. So the vocational now they call that call it CT Career Technical Education program. So. Uh, I think the Department of Education is planning to. We had this before at Chuk High School, like the, we they offer the uh, the courses or uh, classes for CT before. But uh, if you remember when they uh, amend the teacher certification, they uh, lay off all the teachers that did not have degrees. So. Uh, that's the time most of the those program the courses uh, stop offering at the high school. Level. So this new school year, we're planning to I'm planning doing a proposed budget for teachers, CT teachers uh, for 19, I think school year 18 to 19. So the program uh, we had, we're planning to run or we had last year for uh, sewing, uh, gardening, business courses, uh, basic computer, and then we had the nursing program. But we that one we had the MOU with the public health. What are the drawbacks in accomplishing those goals? Like how you want to restart the like restart the programs of educational. Um, like you mentioned, how the department doesn't seem to be supportive of restarting for forever young. Um, what other drawbacks do you guys come across? I think the, the lack of funding, that's one, uh, because we cannot start this program without uh, certified teachers that will teach the courses. Uh, but we're going to start this program the, or the courses using our teachers at two guys school. So we're going to start running the program in the afternoon. Once the morning session is finished, then we'll start the program using the teachers. And these programs were some of the program these were programs that originally started during the reform? Yes. Um, during the reform, what was the most popular, uh, popular, successful program? Because I think me and Paul both started in the same year, 2011. But I started, bef I had before Paul came. Mm -hmm. We started at the college prep group, mm -hmm. but we started with two classes, I think 60, 60 students. Uh, I think that's the, the most uh, successful program throughout the, the reform at Chukas because we monitor, we look at the number of students made it on the college entrance test. The first year, four students made it into the fifth report. And then along the way, we, we kept we kept improving. Last year, we had 115. Students. Wow. We like last year we just we finally reached our goal of enrolling 100 students, seniors, into CO. That's our goal when we first started. Congratulations. That's really good. For um, the programs, what among the ones that you guys did during the brief or what was the least successful? Not, it's not saying that it wasn't successful, but just the least successful of your programs. I think that's the, the, the vocation, the CP. Yeah. 
that's, that wasn't so. um, was, was not really successful because because of that problem we, we don't have, have we don't have teachers to teach the mm -hmm. courses we we submitted our plan to the department that we had the two groups of students and uh, when they at 10th grade after they take the national minimum competency test for all 10th graders in the FSM, that's when we're going to uh, separate them. Students going to the college prep and then some will go to the CT program. And since we don't have teachers, we just keep like helping them to be prepared for the college entrance test or uh, going on to PCC, PIU, CCPIU. But most of them, they did not really successful. I think they, for me, maybe they're going to be good at doing things like hands on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the big pencil paper or pen paper thing. They need to focus in, into the CT program. Mm -hmm. How many computers do you have? Um, in total that students have access to? So we purchased, I think, close to 500 Chromebooks uh, for the students. We only had one computer lab. And we have six or eight charging cards for the Chromebooks. Uh, so the cards we just place the Chromebooks inside and then uh, plug the card, uh, the power cord to the outlet and it charge all the Chromebooks inside. So I think students have access or have access to close to 200, 200 of the Chromebooks. So they just take out the charging cords and they take them to the classroom. But we started with this building because it's closer to the computer lab. Mm -hmm. Our plan is to put maybe two in uh, one of the buildings on campus so that it's, we're going to use those classrooms as computer lab. Mm -hmm. And the teachers will just rotate or sketch all out when are they going to use the programs. But that's how many maybe they can access for one day. <coughs> more, than, more than 200, more than 500. Yeah. We were told that you have an in independent internet system that doesn't depend on the telecom. Um, is that true? Can you explain how it works, if it is? All right, so the internet, we, we connected to the one at telecom. Oh, you did. But we have our server at Chukai School where they just, the ID just download everything like the educational video clips or Khan Academy program on that server and then all of the teachers can, and students can access, they can access, same as the one, I think, I don't know if, because the one, the first one we had was uh, installed by Isolution. And they, they came and also did a training with the teachers on how to use it. And it was really helpful because they had lesson plans, students' activities, and student, teachers can, and students can access the 